Lesson 15, using flashback database in a data guard configuration. After completing this lesson, you should be able to uh, explain the advantages of using flashback database in a data guard configuration. And also, you should be able to configure flashback database in the primary database in standby databases. And also explain functionalities of a replicated restore point. And also, you should be able to explain the functionalities of automatic flashback. In the data guard environment, uh, flashback database provide very good uh, you know, solutions in a couple of you know, uh, cases. For example, uh, when you perform uh, point in time recovery of a primary database, uh, in order to synchronize your standby databases, you can use a flashback database technology. Or when you perform failover operation and your primary database, original primary database, it becomes new physical standby database, but the status will be disabled because uh, original primary database has more changes applied compared to new primary database. So in, in order to resynchronize original primary database, which became physical standby database, with a new primary database, which was a standby database, we have to, uh, you know, use, we should use flashback technology. So in order to reinstate the original primary database, uh, we can use a flashback database technology. Or uh, in order to uh, clean up uh, unwanted changes, which is a logical errors, we can also use a flashback database. And another case is, uh, if you have a physical standby database, this physical standby database, it can be uh, converted to a uh, snapshot standby database, which is fully updatable uh, standby database. Now, after you completing testing in the snapshot standby database, you should be able to flash back. For that purpose, uh, we uh, we use a flashback database technology to clean up all the all the modified uh, data um, before converting to physical standby database from snapshot standby database. So there are many huge cases of a flashback database in the data guard embodiment. So let's take a look at flashback database overview. Uh, flashback database, it doesn't recover your database from physical failure. For example, if you have a problem with a control file, if you have a problem with the table space and data files, then you cannot use a flashback. However, if there is any logical changes or logical you know, uh, errors, then you can flash back your database by applying flashback logs. By doing so, we can uh, the, uh, clean up all unwanted changes. In order to configure flashback database, the requirement is you must configure fast recovery area. That's number one. And after configuring the fast recovery area, uh, you will need to set a DB flashback retention target. Uh, so you will have to set in a, a uh, you will have to set it to a, a appropriate a appropriate value. So how long you want to keep flashback log? So you know, that is to flash back to the your required point. And also, uh, you will have to, you will enable flashback database on. But very importantly, flashback requires archive log. So you will have to configure your database archive log first, and then you will uh, go through, you know, this configuration steps. So when you look at Enterprise Manager, 
uh, you will have to configure archive log mode as required and then you will have to enable flashback database and your flashback uh, logs will be stored in the fast recovery area so you will have to set uh, you will have to allocate enough uh, amount of space for fast recovery area uh, if you are using flashback database and you enable flashback in the primary and standby database uh, you don't need uh, uh, the redo uh, apply delay feature prior to uh, the prior to uh, I think a work of version 10 um, we could have set up a redo apply delay feature in the standby database uh, to protect your database from logical failure so if you have any unwanted changes made to primary database, you know, we could, uh, you know, choose standby database uh, that doesn't include the unwanted changes. But, uh, it, uh, you know, this feature works in case you have a multiple uh, standby databases. Uh, if you are using flashback database, you only need a single standby database or minimal standby databases. So if you have a flashback, uh, if you have any logical chain, uh, logical errors in the primary, you can easily flash back uh, to recover from unwanted changes. So if you are using flashback database, and you can uh, enable real-time apply, even though unwanted changes applied in the standby database, that's not a problem. We can simply flash back. You can flash back primary database, and you can flash back standby database as well. Okay, so here we have a first usage of a flashback database. Uh, suppose that you are performing a point in time recovery. After you perform point in time recovery or flashback database in the primary database, uh, you can actually flash back standby database to resynchronize it. For example, the current system change number is 1000, primary database 1000, and standby database 1000. But we noticed that there is some you know, user errors at system change number 900 in the primary database. So when you perform flashback database or point in time recovery until system change number 900, then your standby database includes more changes from 900 to 1000. So in order to uh, resynchronize physical standby database, you will have to flash back standby database to the system change number 900. So you have to resynchronize it. And the other one is, Use a flashback database to flashback a database to point in time before a switchover or failover. And primary and standby databases retain their current roles when you flashback through physical standby, switchover, or failover. Database roles are flashed back when you flashback through logical standby switch over or fail over. A second bullet and third bullet, this may be a little bit confusing part, so I'm going to actually show you examples through a whiteboard. So let's say uh, we're going to make this in a, in a scenario. You have a primary database and you have a physical standby database, primary and you have a physical standby database. So at this time, your uh, primary database, uh, we create restore point. So we have a guaranteed restore point 01. And this is a corresponding to 1000, for example. That's a system change in number 1000. So let's say you have a you know, plan to work, and so you created a restore point, so that's a thousand. And then over the time, you know, um, we have a new changes. 
So we have a current SCN number is now 3000, for example. Okay, so your primary database and physical standby database and current system change number is 3000. And then we're going to perform switch over operation. So primary database, it becomes physical standby database. And your physical standby database, it becomes new primary database. Okay, so this is a physical standby database and this is um, the primary database. So since you know our current system change number uh, is 3000 here and 3000 here. So suppose that you are flashing back database. So system change number 1000, this is a before switch over. I want to flash back to 1000. At system change number 1000, what was your standby database role? That's a physical standby database. So when you flash back this database, which is a current physical standby database, from 3000 to 1000, then this database will be uh, recovered based on system change number 1000. So all changes between 1000 to 3000 will be cleaned up and the role will be retained. This physical standby database, even after you recover physical, stand, uh, recover physical standby database. And your new primary database still retain same system change number, uh, same database role. So that's in a physical standby database scenario. But what about this example? I have a primary database and I have a standby database. So in this case, I have a primary database and we created a, a guaranteed restore point. And at this time, I had a physical standby database. And also, we have a restore point 1000. So we created in a you know, restore point. So at system change number 1000, this database role is a primary, and this database role is a primary, like a physical standby. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to change this database role to a logical standby database. But this is temporary status. DB name is retained, same as before. I'm not sure you heard about transient logical standby database. So you're going to make this database as a logical standby database. So let's say we change the database, uh, the physical standby database to logical standby database as system change number 2000. So as system change number 1000, this database was a physical standby database. And uh, system change number 2000, your physical was converted to logical standby database. That's a scenario. Okay. Uh, you can create logical standby database and you keep it permanently. Or you can convert physical to logical standby database without changing DB name. So you can issue uh, the alter database, blah, 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 at the end, keep identity. Meaning that your logical standby database status is just for temporary status. Okay, so that's what you can do. Now, in a real scenario, this could be used for database rolling upgrade. That's what we're going to discuss in the later lessons. Actually, there's, a, uh, I think, a last lesson. So, you know, uh, in, a, in a real, a real a more realistic in a scenario, you can actually uh, perform a database upgrade while
primary database still open uh, to, suppo uh, to support applications and end users. After this logical standby database is recovered, okay, uh, the, any cha uh, the changes made to primary database is propagated to primary uh, standby database and redo coming from older database software is converted to SQL statement because it is a logical standby database and then we apply SQL statement to recover this logical standby database. So we can synchronize easily. Okay, And then we're going to perform switch over operation for example. So switch over operation was done at system change number let's say 10,000. So that's your switch over. So this database now becomes logical standby database and also my logical standby database that is in the temporary status and this becomes a primary database. Okay, and that was done at system change number 10,000. And then what we're gonna do uh, in this in a database, uh, in this database, uh, we're gonna actually uh, perform the upgrade process. Okay, uh, we're gonna actually perform the uh, the upgrade process. To do so, we're gonna flash back this is logical standby database to the system change number 1000. So we're going to flash back logical standby database to the 1000. Now, question, at system change number 1000, what was database role? Physical standby database. The time when we created the uh, guaranteed restore point, my standby database row was a uh, type was a physical standby database. So when you flash back, uh, flash back the logical standby database to thousand, then your logical standby database it becomes physical standby database. So we can change the database row by when performing a uh, flashback of a logical standby database. When you actually flash back physical standby database, there is no row change. But when you uh, flash back logical standby database, it will convert it back to physical standby database. So my, you know, uh, the physical standby database that was flashed back from logical standby database, we can start MRP background process, and it can receive all the redos that describes data dictionary changes. So we can recover data dictionary in the physical standby database. That's a part of the upgrade process. You don't have to execute catalog.sql script or cat upgrade script because MRP receives read changes that describes data dictionary upgrade from current primary database. So we use this strategy um, to minimize downtime in case of um, the rolling database upgrade. So uh, this you know, explains uh, the bullet num uh, second bullet and this is the explanation of uh, bullet number uh, three. So let's come back to the slide. Okay, so let's take a look at bullet here. Primary and standby databases retain their current roles when you flash back through physical standby switchovers or failovers. I explained it. And database roles are flashed back when you flash back through logical standby switchovers or failovers. That's what I explained. And flashback database can be used to undo physical database activation as well. Now, let's talk about this using flashback database after failover. Okay, after failover, if you, uh, after failover, you have a new primary database and depending on your uh, data, uh, uh, data protection mode, you may have a loss of data 
or you may have a, you know, synchronized uh, database. So uh, the primary database, it may have the same or less amount of data compared to a new standby database, which was original primary database. If a primary database, it includes less amount of data, okay, but we have more changes applied in the original primary database, we have to clean up additional changes committed in the primary original primary database. To do so, we can use flashback technology. And this is called the reinstate operation. Okay? Whenever you change the database role as a part of a failover, then reinstatement of a physical standby database and logical standby database are required. So that way we can reuse the uh, original primary database. Okay, uh, so let me actually, uh, let me actually uh, uh, clear this again. When you, when you uh, fail over, uh, your, uh, when, you fail, when you perform failover operation, original primary database must be flashed back, okay, to resynchronize. I better this way, I better speak this way. So I was a little confused. So you have to uh, flash back original primary database. Okay, so that's what we have to know. Now, good news. Starting from 19C, whenever you create restore point in the primary database, that will be propagated to standby databases. So this is perfect for uh, database rolling upgrade. Whenever you perform database rolling upgrade, we create restore point manually in each database. But with this feature, when you create restore point in the primary database, then everything is propagated. So we can simplify this process. And another uh, good news is automatic flashback on physical standby database. Keyword physical standby database. So when you flash back primary database, and if your standby databases are in mount state, then all of your physical standby databases automatically flashed back to the same point. However, if your physical standby database is it currently open mode, then automatic flashback of a physical standby database feature will fail. But when you mount your database, then automatic flashback of a physical standby database feature will be applied again, so we can flash back to the same point like a primary database. What about logical standby database? No, logical standby database you know, doesn't work you have to flash back logical standby database manually. Okay, this is for physical standby database. Uh, as a part of a practice activity, I created a, a practice activity on automatic flashback of a physical standby database feature. And also, I demonstrated uh, how to uh, enable this feature so we have to mount your database and you watch until flashback is done in the physical standby database. And also I created another practice activity so you will verify whether a logical standby database is flashed back at the time when you flash back primary. And you will notice that logical standby database remain same, it includes logical errors. So flashback does, automatic flashback doesn't work. So, you know, you have to uh, manually flash back logical standby database to the point where, you know, uh, the, to, to the point, target, to the target point. Okay? So I created uh, these two practice activities. You know, you will actually learn, uh, you will learn, uh, uh, you will learn from your hand-drawn practice activities. Okay? And also, uh, we have a quiz. Flashback database can be performed only on databases that are in the primary role 
No, you can also flash back in the primary uh, physical standby database and also logical standby database. That's not a problem. When a user issues flashback on a primary database, DBA is responsible for manual issue of a flashback database. Uh, this one, I created this in a quiz, but I didn't make it clear. So, uh, let's say this is a context of a physical standby database. Do you have to flashback physical standby database when you perform flashback of a primary database? So my intention was this quiz. So if that is the, if that is the case, no, you don't need a manual flashback because the automatic flashback of physical standby database feature was introduced in 19C. But if for this quiz, if you interpreted this question in this way, when a user issues a flashback on primary database, DBA is responsible for manual uh, 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 responsible for manual uh, manually issuing flashback of a logical standby database. If that, uh, if if you interpreted this question in that way, the answer is yes. So for the physical standby database, automatic flashback is available. For logical standby database, we have to manually issue flashback database. Okay. So I didn't make this quiz you know, clear. So depending on uh, the standby database type, the answer could be false or the answer could be true. My, uh, my initial intention was uh, this, quiz, uh, this quiz was for physical standby database. So the answer is B. But you know, uh, you know actually uh, what is the meaning of this question. OK, so that's you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the last quiz. Uh, this is lesson 15. We discussed about flashback database feature in the data guard environment. Practice 15-1, configuring flashback database on the primary database. In this practice activity, we're going to see how to uh, configure your primary database to use a flashback database. You locate host01 as the first step, and then you will log in as a sysdba, and check flashback feature whether it is turned on or not. The initial state is turned off. And flashback database requires archive logs. So you have to make sure your database is currently configured to use archive log mode. And also, flashback database uses uh, flashback log. And flashback log, uh, flashback log location is a fast recovery area. So you will have to configure a uh, faster recovery area. You have to add enough space. And also determine the current amount of a time in minutes for flashback window. So your flashback window is about 24 hours or 1440 minutes or one day. So you can flashback any point within one day recovery window. Uh, just testing purpose, you can also adjust flashback window to be three days. That's 14, uh, the 43, 20 minutes. And then we're going to flashback on. And you confirm that flashback feature has been enabled in the primary database and you're going to determine the current size of a flashback data. So it's in bytes. And also, you determine name and quantity and size of a flashback logo files that were created. The output may, uh, may be different. In my case, I have a two flashback logo files. This is a practice 
practice 15-2, this time we're going to configure flashback database on the physical standby database, which is a London database. London is running out of host shadow 3, so you will have to locate host shadow 3, and you have to make sure you configure environment variable for London, and you log in as a sysdba, and your current flashback database feature in the physical standby database, it is disabled. And also, archive log list. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it is required. So uh, the prerequisite is done. Actually, this in, uh, I duplicated this, but in, in your eKit, you will see only one time. So archive log, uh, archive log mode is a requirement to use flashback database. Uh, just like a primary database, you will have to make sure you have enough space in the faster recovery area. And also, you can check retention target, which was the same as a primary database. And you're going to alter retention target to three days for demonstration purpose. And then when you attempt to enable flashback database in the physical standby database, you will get error message saying that you currently have a read apply service up and running, thus we cannot change it, your database flashback configuration. So what we will have to do is, uh, let's go come back to host shadow one and using data guard broker command line interface, you connect to Boston database. And then you will turn off read apply service. Finally, on host zero 3, I can run it again. So alter it. Alter database flashback on. And then you can verify. As you can see, flashback feature has been enabled in the London database. And since I configured my physical standby database to use a flashback database, now I can safely turn on read apply service. And that's it. I will exit out of a data guard broker command line interface and SQL prompt. This is a practice 15-2. Practice 15-3, configuring flashback database on the logical standby database. Just like the uh, uh, last two practice activities, now we're going to enable flashback database on London 2 logical standby database. First of all, you will get into host 3 to set environment variables for London 2. Make sure you configure your environment variable for London 2, not London. And you log in as sysdba using SQL plus. And the current configuration is the flashback feature not enabled. The flashback requires archive log. So it is enabled. And also, flashback database uses faster recovery area. So we have a faster recovery area destination and size of it. And also, uh, we will have to set retention time of a flashback log. By default, it is one day, 24 hours. Uh, demonstration purpose, you can change it to something different. In our case, three days. So 
uh, we should be able to flash back at any point within three days of recovery window. And then we're going to uh, enable flashback database. And then we're going to verify. Once you're verified, you exit out. This is a practice 15-3. Practice 15-4, Testing Automatic Flashback of Standby Database. In this practice activity, you will simulate a primary database logical failure. And in order to roll back or recover from unwanted changes from primary database, we will apply flashback database feature at the primary database. And then we're going to also check the physical standby database to see the physical standby database must be flashed back manually or flashback is done automatically in 19C database. To uh, perform this practice activity, we're going to locate terminal window on host jetter 1 and you will set environment variable correctly and you will log in as a sysdba and especially you will connect to dev1 pluggable database and then we're going to create restore point for this practice activity and you will verify. In the primary database, we created restore point called Boston GRP, guaranteed restore point. It is associated with system change number 4925176. In your practice environment and your practice activity, definitely you will see a different number. So throughout this practice activity, go with, your pra go with your system change number, not the one in the practice activity manual. In the primary database, uh, we're going to view HR data, and that will be your reference data for this practice activity. So sum of your salary value and also number of employees that belong to department ID 90. Again, this is just for, uh, for simple testing. And then we're going to simulate unwanted change. So I will execute one script to simulate huge error. And this is not in a physical error simulation. This is in a just user logical error uh, simulation. So we updated on one of the, we updated the HR employees data by mistake, for example, and you commit it. So when you double check HR data that you viewed in the previous step, now you will see that the result, result is different. Okay, suppose that you made a, a, wrong, a wrong update statement by mistake it did, that changed your production data. So, if you want to uh, uh, if you want to recover this logical change, one simple way to do it is a flashback database feature. Okay, so that's what you have to know. Now, let's take a look at uh, physical standby database on host zero three. and you will have to set environment variable correctly so my current uh, my current pluggable database status is read only however if your current pluggable database status is mounted then you will have to open london database and open pluggable database but in my case, it's already open read only. 
So for the verification purpose, I will get into that one in the, uh, in the London database. And also, let's see if London database can see the restore point that was created in the primary database. Okay, so as you can see, we have a Boston GRP primary, and it is a replicated guaranteed restore point, meaning that we created a, a guaranteed restore point from primary database. It was automatically replicated to standby database. This is a 19C new feature. Okay, so we checked the one thing. And also, what about data? If a, a physical standby database, if it, it keeps original data, and also it is a state before applying you know, uh, logical user errors, then we can go with the physical standby database data. However, in our case, data already applied. So unwanted changes already applied. So our decision is to recover logical error in the primary database, we need to perform flashback database because that's a simpler and faster way to recover your logical error. So we're gonna go, come back to host data one. And since you are in the uh, dev one, you will have to log in as a sysdba to connect to cdb root container and then you will have to shut down immediate and start up mount state to perform flashback database feature so after waiting a few seconds you can start your database up to mount state And this is a consistent state that allow us to perform flashback database. So in order to perform flashback database, I will exit out. And we're gonna use RMN utility to connect to target database and also to flashback. Uh, in this example, we use RMAN to connect to target database as a sys backup. But you can also log in as a sys, or you can also uh, log in with OS authentication without providing as a sys backup. So I, I got into um, the Boston database using RMAN utility. And then I will simply issue flashback database to restore point. and recovery is done. So I'm going to exit out and then I'm going to log in as a sysdba to Boston database and for verification purpose I will open Boston database in read-only mode and your DAP database also open in the read-only mode. So that way we can verify data. So your testing data in HR schema is residing in DEP pluggable database. So I will have to switch container to DEP1 and then let's verify. As you can see, your unwanted changes cleaned up successfully. And then you can restart database to open your database reset log. To do so, you have to be in the CDB root and you have to shut down immediate because the current state is open in read-only mode. Okay, so now I'm gonna start up mount state so that way I can open Boston database in uh, the with the reset log option. And also 
in the Boston database, in the practice one, uh, we save the state of DAB one. So app to open Boston database with a recent log, when you check the status of DAB one, it must be open read write. Okay, so let's double check the status of PDBs, pluggable databases. As you can see, DAB one is open uh, in read or write mode. And then I'm going to verify uh, data in the physical standby database. So in host zero one, we successfully cleaned up unwanted changes and we open uh, physical standby database with the reset log. So primary database is clear. But what about your physical standby database? So when you go to you know, uh, in the physical standby database, and you will see data. Unfortunately, data is the same as before, so we still have unwanted changes, even though we flashed back prim primary database. According to Oracle document, starting from 19C, your physical standby database is automatically flashed back when you flash back primary database and open recent log. But there is one requirement. To use that feature, your physical standby database must be in mount state. So before uh, mounting your database, we're going to open new terminal window on host 03. And then we're going to check alert logo file. for London database. As you can see, we have uh, um, some you know, error messages. So we have a uh, couple of error messages here. Du, 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 du. It's the host channel three, recovery coordinator. Warning, destination, saving, it's not only. Oh, here we go. Recovery uh, coordinator encountered one or more errors during automatic flashback on standby. So in the standby database, we attempted to perform automatic flashback of a standby database. But it didn't work because your standby database was in open read only mode. So, you know, this automatic flashback of a standby database feature, it works only at mount state. So in order to automate flashback of a standby database, we're going to uh, start database mount state. So you go back to host 03 and connect as says DBA. and shut down immediate and we're going to start up mount state this time we will use tail-f option to review the most current alert logs for london database so i prepared alert log file for london Shutdown is done, and then we're going to start up mount state. And then I'm going to look at alert logo file. So you will see the progress. So we start up database mount state, and starting background process, primary database is in maximum performance. And as you can see, series of background processes are running at instance startup time, including R, uh, the MRP process, RFS process, and also we have a recovery target destination is in sibling uh, branch, 
and also MRP detected uh, of uh, offered uh, data files and also we have a series of you know uh, the messages okay so we're doing a lot of things so let me actually go up here a little bit as you can see look at this so MRP process it automatically detected a reset log from primary database and initiated flashback uh, database in the physical standby database that's what it is so we don't have to recover physical standby database using flashback because it is automated when you mount to your physical standby database so this is this is your automated feature in 19c so that's what we can check so once you confirmed you come back to host 03 and you will open London database and then you will also open pluggable database and then we're gonna verify HR data to see if a flashback worked or not here we go so unwanted changes automatically flash it back so what we're gonna do in the primary database since we completed this demonstration we're gonna drop restore point and in this practice activity we observed a couple of things number one when you create a restore point in the primary database that is propagated to standby database especially physical standby database and the physical standby database create restore point automatically that's a 19c new feature and also in one in order to recover primary database from logical failure you can apply flashback database feature and this operation is also automated in the logical standby database to synchronize physical standby database with recovered primary database so flashback of a standby database is automated that's another uh, another feature in 19c so we observed and listed two new features from practice 15-4 this is practice 15-4
So I have you know, this, these error messages telling that, uh, uh, the meaning that uh, your logical standby database must be synchronized with the primary database. Because after open your primary database with the recent log, logical standby database cannot apply any other changes uh, from that point. So, uh, how can I do that? Since automatic uh, the flashback of a logical standby database didn't work, only automatic flashback of a physical standby database works in 19C. You have to flashback of a logical standby database manually. To do so, we're going to do this, uh, uh, these steps. In host jet 1, you're going to log in as a sysdba. And we're going to check reset log number minus 2. And that's my target number where we need to flash back to. So since your logical standby database system change number and your primary database system change number do not match, so we have to convert this system change number the, the one in the uh, the one for logical standby database to do so uh, on host 3 where uh, you connected it to logical standby database you will have to change it you will have to find the corresponding system change number so you will have to log in as a sysdba make sure you are in the logical standby database Okay, London 2. And then you're going to run this SQL statement. Select DBMS logical standby map primary system change number. In my case, my target system change number was this. As a part of a practice activity, make sure you use your number, not the one in the book, in the, in the e kit. So, in the whole shadow 3, I will convert this number to number in the logical standby database. Here we go. So your primary database system change number 4925176 is, uh, uh, is equivalent to uh, system change number 5613068 in the logical standby database. In order to flashback your logical standby database, you will have to shut down immediate and then you will have to start up your logical standby database with ex uh, exclusive mode. And then we're going to flash back. This time we're going to use a SQL prompt to flash back. You can also use RMN, doesn't matter. So RMN interface or SQL interface doesn't matter. So now we're going to use a flashback logical standby database. But this time system change number is a number obtained just in the step number 6. In our case, this system change number. Now flashback is done. Now we're going to verify data. To do so, you have to open London 2 database reader only mode. And also DEP1 must be read only mode. In the DEP1 pluggable database, we're going to verify data. Okay, as you can see, the unwanted changes applied in the logical standby database already cleaned up by using flashback database feature, the manual steps in the logical standby database. So since I already uh, cleaned up 
unwanted changes in the logic standby database. Now we will have to shut down database and restart with a reset log. And at open state, you're going to open logical standby database with the reset log option. And then you're going to open that one pluggable database. Okay, so after starting that one, we will start SQL apply service. If it's running already, then that's fine. So according to this me message, logical standby apply, uh, standby apply must be stopped to allow this operation, meaning that your logical standby uh, SQL apply service is already running. So we are fine. So we're going to exit out. Now let's check the status of a log, uh, status of a data guard broker configuration to see everything is healthy and okay. So dgmgrl connect sys data guard oracle underscore for you Boston, and then we're gonna run show configuration. As you can see, everything is normal. Boston is good, and Boston uh, uh, the uh, would flash the back successfully, and physical standby database flash the back automatically. London two database flash the back manually, and this is a practice fifteen five.